This could be another dog's breakfast video, but um, it's the way it's going to be. Um, yeah, I was walking back from the shops. So I had to go and pick up some cat food for her, uh, for Puss, and um, I was uh, what the hell? It just uh, yeah, it was just a memory of uh, it flashed into my head about um, um, uh, Jezza One playing Twilight in the East right now. Oh my gosh, hold on here. I want to go take a look. I don't think I actually have. Um, it just never dawned on me. It was like upstairs. I can remember last year when I went to Ken Games, 31 days to go. Um, and I was, uh, I remember saying, oh, I picked up this thing and uh, Meandering Mike was like, oh, that's a, a pretty, a pretty valuable item. I think I'm missing, well, I think I'm missing the map. Maybe I didn't read the uh, thing right. Maybe it just said magazine only when I picked it up at that uh, guy's store. Uh, I don't mind. It's no biggie. Um, I mean, well, obviously I would have enjoyed playing it, but it's just, I mean, I'm going to take a look at this. This is just ridiculous. So, and I'll follow along with uh, Jesse One. Uh, anyways, the reason why I'm bringing that up is, um, quite frankly, that um, he's using um, all kinds of nice little blocks, colored blocks and stuff. And I went, oh my God, you're bringing me right back to square one. Uh, yeah, like with me uh, using it, and it's not because I probably would have ended up doing it anyways. It's just the way I am. But it was not me that uh, triggered it in my head. It was two people, and I want to mention them right off the bat. So that's why I was thinking because I'm I'm getting to the end of my. I mean, as you know, I'm going to continue on playing, but um, I'm getting to the end of my the actual first mini game and I just assumed that's all I was going to be playing was the Tannenberg and Galicia Link scenario and it just went from there. But the two people that even got me to that point um, to even try a big game if you want to call it that is Dad vs. Son and Jezza One. Those two people were um, integral uh, for me to try it. One because when I watched uh, Dad vs. Son doing um, Stalingrad 42 uh, the campaign game and I was like oh my god it was a beautiful looking map he had blocks all over the bloody place uh, bingo chits I was just my mind was going a mile a minute and I was just like whoa I don't know what's really going on but he was doing like this amazing uh, uh, you know uh, explanation of what was happening so I mean I didn't I, I mean you get the idea I didn't understand all the little nuances of what he was talking about the game mecha uh, mechanisms and everything but I was just like this is a beautiful looking game. And I was like, wow. Then I saw Jezza One um, play the duration, the full on, I mean, not Grand Campaign. He said he had tried it uh, before. I mean, that's how. Uh, and uh, him wandering around the house, maps all over the place, maps on the walls, and using them at, like that. I was like, what the hell is going on? This, is, this person is so amazing. It's like, I was just beyond, beyond, uh, just, I was absolutely astounded. And uh, that's what happened. I actually had uh, Stalingrad 42 set up downstairs, the whole nine yards. I had everything going. Uh, about, I was reading the rules and I hit a brick wall. I've mentioned this several times and I just put it away. And lo and behold, look what happens. I did make notes because I, it was a good idea to be making notes. Um, I'm not kidding you, man. I've been wanting to do a bingo game, World War One bingo game, for so long, it's not funny. And uh, my boss woke me up. Uh, she phoned. She's not coming into work tomorrow. She's feeling a bag of whatevers. And uh, that helped. I mean, I wasn't too happy to be woken up from a phone call. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I get woken up every occasionally from the freaking uh, Canadian Diabetes Association clothing drive or whatever the hell. But anyways, um, that helped me. I, something triggered. I went, that's how you're going to do bingo. I went, oh my God. Um, I've like, I, it, it's because I didn't want to just do a, a straight up game. I wanted to have, um, uh, you know, to have some uh, trivia bits or whatever. Like I want to learn while I'm playing bingo kind of thing. If other people want to do it, it's a bonus. Um, so anyways, I'm like, yes. Um, also mentioning that uh, well, what's going on during for the week with me, like I said, I've been uh, I really want to focus on Romania and prepare for the Paul Hederer um, interview, uh, the designer for 1916 Prelude to Blitzkrieg, uh, Blitzkrieg, 
And um, as well, though, I mean, I know I can feel it. Eh? It's just like, uh, there's a lot, like I said, that's the synergy. When I saw Twilight in the East and Jezza One playing this game, I went, this isn't like a coincidence, Chris. Like, you don't believe in any of those things anyways. And um, I was like, yep, that's him telling you you're getting close to the end of the game. Uh, please. Okay, that doesn't mean I believe the universe... I'm not getting into that crazy nonsense. Um, I will say this, and I mentioned it before, I can really feel it, and I'm super happy to be going... It's for several reasons. Uh, the Arabian conflict zone downstairs is just... I'm going to try to give it as much of attention and detail um, as I am with the Eastern Europe conflict zone, just due to the fact that, for a lot of reasons, there's so much... Uh, narrative sitting there for me not to mention there's so much stuff to learn historically and uh, for all the game mechanisms there's so many exceptions you know with the climate and dealing with all these interesting things about what the Ottomans can do and so on and so forth I just like I'm really I real I'm really excited for that uh, to, to pop up uh, which will maybe we'll I'll get I'll bring up this uh, RPG thing. So like I mentioned before, I've been trying to get into uh, figuring out what I'm going to do with the RPG stuff. And I'm going to have to look at this a lot more. I picked this up last year, Ross's Rifles. And um, I'm certainly going to... I I was like, gosh, Chris, you didn't anywhere give it any... nowhere near the uh, amount of uh, attention it should. Uh, there's a monster amount of game design... Uh, uh, notes and all that stuff and player aid uh, stuff like that. I was like, oh my gosh. But anyways, this was a smart pickup. I picked this up many, many years ago at Can Games, um, probably from the same company that I picked the, the other games up from. Uh, he's just such a nice guy, um, Bob. And he's a super, super duper nice guy. Anyways, and uh, you know, it was just like I've always wanted to have a spy game kind of thing. Never thought I'd play it. It was just a whatever. And, um, like I said, I don't know what the heck the camera's looking at. Um, Meandering Mike mentioned that, uh, he was like, oh yeah, I played that in the day. It's a half-decent game. I've gone through the rules here. I'll take a quickie look. I mean, you know what? And I was even saying to Zoe Do for, oh my gosh, their scenario in here is monstrous. Like, it's really detailed. I'm like, thanks a lot. You're going to help me out. Take a look at stuff. Um, I was saying to Zoe Do for earlier, I said, this, is gonna, this uh, game is going to be so easy to modify for World War One. It's not funny. Uh, it's just great. Um, so yeah, it, it's look, I'm really, really happy. There's going to be very, very, very minor modifications. Um, but I was, you know, I'm, and yet again, I was mentioning Missouri do for that, um, world war one is just, uh, I mean, look, I want to base it certainly in, uh, in Africa, uh, I guess North Africa, if you want to go down that road, but it was also German. There's a ton of stuff there, man. Um, yeah, there's just monstrous amounts, but I'm still going to do a bit more, uh, like, I mean, I got books downstairs of, like, you know, My Life as a Spy, which I think was uh, the guy who did, um, uh, founded the um, the Boy Scouts, which uh, the Grog Shed mentioned uh, to us. He was like, holy cow, I didn't know he he found, uh, the, the guy who founded the, um, the, the Boy Scouts was... Um, uh, you know, a spy, and I'm like, well, I didn't know the, the spy was a, the founder of the Boy Scouts, so there you go, I love that, you know what I mean? Uh, anyways, here, here are my notes, things, oh yeah, here's a t-shirt that's going off the Harold Bosma, um, and I will say this too, uh, hopefully you can see it, and Harold Bosma, if you don't want blue, man, let me know, um, please, please, please let me know, um, I think you said blue or white, um, and, one person I made a t-shirt for, probably I think the first person I ever made a t-shirt for, I still haven't even sent them a t-shirt. Mandarin Mike, for God's sakes, of all people. I mean, that guy's been like, just a, you should be called monstrous Mandarin Mike for me. Um, just massive. Um, when I found out way back when, he was like, hey, I'm starting to watch your, uh, all your videos. At 1.5 or 2. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I was like so amazed that someone would actually want to watch them sequentially or whatever. I was like, what in the world? And I could see it because he was asking questions. Like I was like, whoa, uh, just been, that's been so amazing. Um, what else can I, I said, oh, there was the other thing too. Because I've been uh, looking at the espionage stuff and whatnot and I've been uh, uh, just, you know, dilly dallying and other word, uh, whatever's. I can see that the, there's a buildup of potential um, creative energy in the in, in my head, 
and uh, it's it's due to this type of stuff, you know, uh, going around a bit. And I can see why uh, um, people that play a lot of games, uh, different types of games, I'm like, oh, you, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, like I said, oh my god, I can't wait to <laughs> try the bingo thing. That is going to be so much freaking fun for me. It's not funny. Uh, oh, darn it. There is probably, oh, no taking yet. Like I said, uh, I'm amazed that, uh, you know, I was reading about how to t uh, write about history at work, just this book. I was like, you never know, Chris. And next thing you know, we're uh, planning to do an interview. Like, <laughs> this is just nuts. I'm like, this is great. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, I think that's really about it. Like I said, it's just been a Babylon and a half, but there's just been so much. I'm trying to, um, also, I know I've got to start hunkering down on um, getting, ready, getting ready for the live stream and whatnot, but, um, and also just this, oh, I just feel such a drive towards um, the game downstairs right now. It's just, um, there's so much stuff for my, my head to be, bu it's bubbling up. Wait until you see what the hell has been going on this week in 1916. I'm just like, what? You got what? I'm not kidding you. It's like one after the flipping other. Uh, other. It's, yeah, I'm really, um, oh, and like I said, I'll oh, we'll go back to the t-shirts thing. Now that I'm, um, so man, you Mike, you have to mention, uh, give me a color because I'm actually going to redo your um, t-shirt just due to the fact that I'm getting better. And secondly, I'm not too sure if I trust those t-shirts because they were from the dollar store. And afterwards, I was f finding all kinds of weird wonky things. So I was like, you know what? Maybe uh, this one came out, I think, not bad. Um, no, it did came, uh, come out bad. No, I love the... Uh, it's got this beautiful, uh, cozy softness to it or something. I don't know. It's like a, almost uh, almost pajama-y uh, type t-shirts or whatever. That's it. Um, yeah. Um, that's it. Like I said, I'm going to go downstairs quickly. I've got to start trying to shut down my head. That's actually my body, right? right? I don't know. Well, a bit of both. Um, uh, so I can try to get some type of sleep for tomorrow morning or for tomorrow at work. And, uh, yeah, I had a lecture today, but I was, um, oh my God. Well, he wasn't the most engaging for me, uh, lecturer. So that didn't help. And I had been up for, oh my God. 20 hours or something retarded so um yeah I was just like I lying down on the couch listening to this guy talk and I was like it's turning into like half a dream <laughs> I was just like what in the world but it was uh like a lot of interesting stuff it was about um um how the British were demobilized and how it was very different from uh uh, other systems around the world and I was like whoa I was an eye, eye opener and a half and all that stuff about what's going to happen after the war and I was like you know because I want to go around again but it's like uh, whoa you're, you're going to have to stick around for a while especially at least to the very end of when the blockade and that's not for I think what they they let that go for another 9 or 10 months or something or 8 months or something crazy anyways that's it okay hope you're having a great time and yeah that's it man see ya